What's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review and today we're taking a look at some brand new Star Wars figures and what we have here are the Black Series Quill, Grief Karga, and Moff Gideon and these are pretty much all the figures that I wanted from this set. The only other one that I missed out on was Dark Ray, but I don't plan on picking that one up anyways. And then they also re-released the Armorer, and that's a character that I still need to get. Um, I didn't get it the first time around. It's cool that they re-released it to make it a little bit easier because she is obviously an essential character, just like all these. So I'm very happy to have these, and eventually I will pick up the armor. But for now, we're taking a look at these, so let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with the packaging, I do really like this new style of packaging that they use for the Black Series figures. I think it looks awesome. Um, you are able to see each of the figures through the windows here, along with their accessories. And I like how we have the matching colors for the waves. It seems like every wave has a different color, and it matches for all the figures in those waves. So that's really cool. And one thing I love about this right here is how you could turn the figures to the side and then the artwork that's on the side of the box all goes together. And it would be really dope to get like a whole poster of that or something. So that is some cool stuff. And then on the back of the box, nothing too special. We get some more artwork of each of the characters and then we also get brief biographies of each one of them. So that's pretty standard stuff there. But yeah, I think the packaging does look nice. It is collector friendly, so you are able to remove the figures and put them back in as you please. But enough about these pretty boxes. Let's go ahead and take a look at Quill, Grief Karga, and Moff Gideon. And so here we have the three of them out of their boxes, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at each one of these figures, starting off with the one that I like the least and building our way to the one that I like the most. So with that said, let's go ahead and grab Grief Karga. And to be honest with you, I had no idea what this character's name was. I was just calling him Carl Weathers. But uh, now I'll remember, now that I have a figure. So I think they did a pretty good job with Grief. And even though he's the figure that I like the least out of the three, I still like him a lot more than I was expecting to. I'm happy to see that he does have a lot of the good stuff that we've seen on recent Black Series figures. Like he does have the double-jointed neck. And then he also has butterfly-jointed shoulders. So I was happy to see all that stuff. And he does have the photorealistic face sculpt. And yeah, I think overall, this is just a really nice figure. But let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the details. Starting off with the head, I'm a little torn on the head. I don't know if I could confidently say that they nailed it. You know, you could look at it and know who it's supposed to be. But the face kind of has like a shiny look to it. And I think it's kind of distracting me. And it's kind of making it hard for me to tell exactly what how I feel about it, you know. But the details on it do look nice. I like some of the paintwork and all that. Um, his mustache looks good. I just need to hit it with like a, like a matte coat to make it, to take away some of that shine. But you know what? It does look like the actor. I think they, I think they did a pretty good job with it. Let me know in the comments. Do you think this is a good head sculpt or is it way off? I could confidently say that I don't think that it's way off. I just, I don't know if I could say that they nailed it either. But at the end of the day, you know, it looks like the character enough to where it's going to look badass on the shelf so i am pretty happy with the head sculpt and then moving down into the body i do like this vest jacket thing it does have a lot of really nice sculpted detail and texture and a lot of good stuff going on and then he does have this like half jacket which is like soft plastic so it really doesn't get in the way of the articulation too much and then it has a strap that kind of connects the front to the back and i don't even know how to describe this thing it's like a cape or like a like a half of a duster or something i don't know but it does look pretty cool and then taking a look at the arms, we do have some more sculpted details all throughout the arms. And then his gloves look really good too. And then continuing on to the body here. At the waist, he does have this big crazy belt that has a nice gold belt buckle in the middle. And then he does have holsters on both sides for his guns, so I like that. And then we do have some more nice sculpted texture detail on the legs. And then same thing with the boots. So yeah, Black Series does a really good job with all the sculpted texture on their figures. So I think they did a good job with this guy. It looks great. And he has pretty decent articulation too. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But overall, I think this is a good looking figure. As far as accessories go, he does come with his two blasters and that's about it. But the guns do look really nice and he has no problem holding them. And then he could also put them into his holsters without any issues. So, um, you know, he doesn't have a whole lot of accessories, but he does have what he needs so I'm happy with that and yeah I like this guy like I said I wasn't really expecting too much from him but once I took him out of the packaging and saw some of the new articulation in there and just how good the figure looks then I became pretty happy with it 
And then next up, we're going to be taking a look at my second favorite out of these three, and that would be Moff Gideon. I think this one here is going to be the one that most people like the most out of this set. But for me, Quill is just hard to beat because he's so awesome. But they did a great job with this figure too. I think this head sculpt is nice. To me, it looks like they nailed it. And man, this dude is such a badass. He's such a good actor, and he, he always kills it as a villain. He does a great job in uh, Mandalorian. He did a great job in The Boys. And obviously, he was awesome as Gus Fring so, in Breaking Bad, just in case you guys don't know. But that's kind of like when he blew up. I know he's been around forever, but I feel like he, he jumped to another level once he once he was finished with Breaking Bad. But yeah, he's awesome. And this figure just does such a good job of capturing his evil ass like emotionless look you know just look at that face he looks like he does not give a fuck and then taking a close look at the details you could see that the face just looks really really nice there's a lot of good sculpting work in there and some good painting work i think the facial hair looks pretty good the eyes look good and i like the different skin tones that we see in there there's there's some depth to the paintwork so i do like that a lot and then we do have his hair that looks pretty good then moving down into the body um, I do like the chest armor piece, but it looks like some of the red on mine is a little bit messed up. So that kind of sucks. I'm going to have to try to touch that up. But I do like the way the armor looks. The shoulder pads are pretty nice too. And I like them because they don't get in the way of the articulation. They're like a soft plastic so you can move his arm. And the shoulder pad just kind of goes over the shoulder. So that's nice. And then we do have some nice sculpting work on the arm. This red line that you see here is sculpted. It's not just painted. And again, they, dude, Hasbro does such a great job with the sculpting work on these Black Series figures. I know some people aren't always happy with the articulation, but it's hard to deny the greatness of the sculpt. They do a really good job with it. You can see the belt here has a lot of nice texture and detail. Same thing with the skirt or whatever you want to call this, the extension of the shirt. And then on the side, we do have a holster for his gun. And then we have some nice sculpting work on the legs and boots. So all of that looks really good. And just in general, I think this is a great looking figure. He does have this plastic cape. Which does have some trouble staying in in the figure. But I think I think this is a pretty decent cape, actually. A lot of times I don't like plastic capes, but I could I could live with this one. I don't feel like I need to run out and buy a soft goods cape right away. If I get the opportunity to get one, I will pick one up because you know you'll you'll need a soft goods cape for like dynamic type of photos. But for now, I'm pretty happy with, with this cape, you know, for just to have on him when he's just kind of hanging out looking evil, you know. But it's a really good looking figure. And as far as accessories go, he does come with his dark saber. Or not his dark saber. He comes with a dark saber. With the dark saber. And at first I thought it was just an all black sword. But once I took a closer look, you could see that there's actually a little bit of a clear area on the blade itself. So I'm very happy that they did that. And he has no problem holding it and it looks really good. And then he does come with this little blaster. And the blaster is very small. But again, he has no problem holding it, which is the most important thing, and it does the job. So I'm happy with the accessories that he came with. It kind of sucks that Black Series figures don't come with like extra hands. That would definitely take them to the next level, but, you know, whatever. Um, luckily, he did come with his weapons, and man, look at him. He is such a good-looking figure. He's such a badass, too, man. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the star of the show, in my opinion, because I really, really like this figure. And, you know, I know a big part of that is influenced by how much I liked him in the show. Because this dude was just so cool. This is a really nice figure. I do like the way that it looks. The one thing I kind of dislike about him is that it's kind of, it's difficult for him to hold his gun. Because it's it's an awkward looking gun. Like it has an awkward trigger area. And his hands seem like they're not really made to hold it. Luckily, I mean, you could kind of get him to hold it. But it just it just looks weird. But the figure itself is amazing. I think they did a great job with everything on this guy. It seems like he has a little less articulation than some other Black Series figures. But he does have enough for a smaller type of character like this. But let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at some of the details on him. Starting off with the head. I really love this head sculpt. And something that caught me by surprise with this is the fact that the helmet comes off. I wasn't expecting that. And the main reason why is because of how good the helmet looked when it was on the head. It's not often that companies are able to do like a removable helmet where it looks good on the figure and off the figure so that was a pleasant surprise and as you can see when you take the helmet off he does have his bald head and you could see a little bit more of his hair I feel like the hair in the back is missing a little bit of paint but it still looks okay 
And yeah, just check out that face sculpt. That looks really nice. I like how the eyes kind of have a watery look to them. And yeah, they, they killed it here for sure. Yeah, they did a great job on this head sculpt. And it looks good with or without the helmet. But let's go ahead and put the helmet back on. And then on the helmet, we do have like the goggles and then the earpieces. And yeah, that's a great looking head sculpt. And then moving down into the body, he does have his scarf. And the scarf is connected to the backpack in the back. So it, it sits pretty securely. It's not like flopping around or anything. The backpack kind of holds it into place. It doesn't peg into the figure. I kind of wish that it did. But as is, I'm okay with it. And then just like the previous two figures, he does have a lot of really nice sculpting work throughout the whole figure. There's a lot of nice texture on all the different like types of clothing. You know, we have some texture on the torso area, texture on the shoulders, and then on the arms. The gloves look really nice too. I feel like the gloves would have looked a little bit better with some more paint detail, but still, I think they look pretty good. And then around the waist, he does have a belt with a belt buckle on the front, and then like pouches on the side that kind of connect to the the skirt thing. I keep calling it a skirt, but I know it's like, <laughs> you know, the longer shirt that's kind of going beneath the belt. But yeah, it's all connected with the pouches. And moving down into the legs, not a whole lot going on, but they do look good. The boots look good. And yeah, I think this is a great looking figure. Like I said, it's my favorite out of the set so far. And then as far as accessories go, he does come with his one gun. And I think this is really nice. I like how the straps aren't attached to the actual gun so you can move them around. And like I mentioned before, it is kind of hard for him to hold it. But you know, if you mess with it, you could definitely get him to hold on to it and do different things with it. But the gun looks good. It does have some nice sculpted details. There's not a whole lot of paint or anything. But yeah, I do like the way this thing looks. And just in general, I'm really happy with this figure. I think they did a good job with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they re-released him like in a deluxe pack with a... What are those things called? Those... Was it the Blurgs, I think they were called? The ones that uh, he wanted Mando to give him one. I think it'd be that would be a really cool like deluxe set to get him and one of those creatures. I think that would be a lot of fun. But for now, I'm very happy that I have this figure so I can have him hang out with Mando and do his thing. And it's it's nice to see that Hasbro did such a great job on it, especially with the head sculpt. I think that's really where they killed it with this figure. And uh, yeah, he's great. So I'm going to do size comparisons a little bit differently this time around. That way you guys don't have to hear me say, and here he is next to blah, 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 a million times. So let's go ahead and get into it. And then taking a look at the articulation, starting off with Grief Karga, the head does have movement at the upper neck and at the lower neck, so using both of those, he can look side to side, and then you do get a little bit of tilt. He could look up to about right there, he could look down to right there, and it's able to go down so much because of that lower neck movement. So I do like that setup on Black Series figures. And then for the torso, the only thing we have is a ball joint at the waist, but using that, can't really crunch forward too much can go back to about right there and then it could go side to side and he can also turn at that joint i do wish that it moved forward just a little bit but you know for a character like this who kind of just stands around and shoots things and acts shady uh, you know i'm all right with this it's fine he doesn't need to crouch over or anything like that at least at least he moves a little bit and he doesn't feel like he's stiff that's the main thing with the character like this and then for the arms they do go all the way around but his jacket does get in the way a little bit and then he does have the butterfly jointed shoulders there's no upper bicep swivel he's going to get his swivel at the elbow and he does have a single jointed elbow and the single jointed elbow can bend to about right there so we've definitely seen him do a little bit better with single jointed elbows. But again, that's pretty decent for a character like this. And then at the hands, we get a swivel and the vertical hinge. For the legs, they go forward to about right there. They come back to right there. They come out to the side to about right there. And then he has upper thigh swivel, 
He has a single jointed knee, which bends to about right there. And then you also have a swivel at the knee. And at the lower leg, uh, no swivel at the lower leg, but his foot does go forward to about right there, comes up to there, and then he has rocking ankles. So he does have a little bit more articulation than I was expecting, but he really doesn't have all that much. But I feel like the amount of articulation that he has suits the character, so I'm okay with it. And then next up we have Moff Gideon. And he does have the same kind of neck setup where we get some movement at the lower neck and at the upper neck. But because of his collar, you're not going to get that much movement at the lower neck. So it doesn't move too much. But the head itself moves okay. It doesn't really have too much of a tilt or anything like that. You're going to get a little bit of tilt from the lower neck and that's about it. He can only look up to about right there. He could look down to about right there. And we get some side to side. So the head and neck movement is pretty limited on him. And then for the torso... We do have that torso joint, that diaphragm cut, so it bends forward to about right there, comes back to right there, and then it can move side to side. I think it's a pretty decent amount of movement for somebody that's wearing like chest armor. And then at the arm, I really like the way that Black Series does the shoulder pads on their figures because it's like a separate piece. It doesn't get in the way of the articulation. It moves along with the arm. And it just comes up over like this. And it seems like it's very similar. Oh, I was going to say, I thought it was similar to how they did the Stormtrooper armors. But it looks like it's just a armor piece that's kind of glued on top of the shoulder. But still, it works out pretty good. Doesn't get in the way of the articulation or anything. So I'm okay with that. But the arms do go all the way around. They could come out to the side to about right there. That's pretty good for a dude with shoulder pads. There's no upper bicep swivel. Once again, we're going to get the swivel at the elbow. He's got a single jointed elbow, which gets a pretty good bend. Could bend to about right there. And then at the hands, we have a swivel and a hinge. I wish he had the... Oh, he does have the vertical hinge on this side, on his trigger finger. So that's nice. And then for the legs, they come out to the side to about right there. They could kick forward to right there. Could bring him back. And then he has upper thigh swivel, single jointed knee, a swivel at the knee, and for the feet, they come forward to right there, they come up to right here, and then he has ankle rockers. So he pretty much has the same amount of articulation as Grief over there, minus the butterfly joints. So I wish they would have given him the butterfly joints since he does come with the dark saber, and you might want to put him in saber swinging poses. But still, again, a decent amount of articulation for this character. And it's going to be the same story with Quill here. He doesn't have all that much articulation, but again, it's enough for this guy. So let's just run through it real quick. For the head, he only has movement at the head itself. He does not have that lower, that lower neck movement. So all the movement at the head comes from where the head meets the upper neck. So, you know, he could move his head around like that. He could look up to right there, which is good because most people are taller than him. He could look down to right there just in case he wants to look at Baby Yoda. And then we get a little bit of tilt. And then for the torso, we do have a ball joint at the waist. Doesn't really get too much movement. It is able to twist, but it kind of makes me nervous. It's like really tight. But it does twist. And then it does tilt. Could lean back only to about right there. And it leans forward only to right there. For the arms, they do come all the way around. They come out to the side. He does not have a butterfly joint. He has single jointed elbows that only bend to about right there. And then they have a swivel at the hand. They have a swivel and a hinge. For the legs, they come out to the side to about right there. He could kick forward to right there. Kick back to right. Can't even kick back too much at all. Only to right there. Then he has upper thigh swivel. A single jointed knee, which gets a pretty good bend, actually. Check that out. That's pretty good. And he also has a swivel at the knee. Uh, no lower leg swivel. He does have a swivel at the foot, though. That's cool. And it's kind of covered by his boot. So you can swivel right there. And then you could bring his foot forward to about right there. Bring him up to there. And then you have rocking ankles. So yeah, pretty standard articulation on all three of these figures. Nothing amazing. 
but enough for each one of the characters. So I'm okay with what we have going on here. So at the end of the day, I do like all three of these. And even though they're not the most exciting figures ever, I'm still really happy to have plastic versions of these characters on my shelf. And it's cool that we got them when the source material is still so fresh. Obviously, Mandalorian Season 2 just ended and everybody's really excited about it. And just the Star Wars magic is in the air. And it's nice that Hasbro dropped these figures right in line with all that excitement for the Mandalorian. So I think that's really cool. As far as the figures themselves, I think that... Every single one of them does a good job of representing the character that they're supposed to. Even though there are some limitations in the articulation department, I think each one of these figures looks really good. And it's going to be nice to match them up with Mandalorian and other characters from that show. Um, just on a like individual basis, none, none of these figures really stand out all that much. Like There's not a whole lot of articulation, not a whole lot of accessories. But if you just want good looking versions of these characters, then these will definitely satisfy you. For me, I think these are like the only versions of these characters that I need. Like if Figure Arts comes out with these in a year, I'll probably pass on them because honestly, I think these ones do the job good enough for me. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And also another thing, if you guys could let me know what you thought of the size comparison segment of this video, I thought that was kind of a cool way to do it where I just show a bunch of size comparisons and throw some music on there. I might be doing that more in the future, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I think that's it. I hope all you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Peace.